Hello, in this video we're going to go over Putnam 2021, 2022, uh, question A1. So the question is asking us to find all pairs of numbers A comma B such that the line Y equals AX plus B intersects the curve Y equals natural log of 1 plus X squared in exactly one point. Here are a few things that come to my mind when I look at this problem. First of all, it looks like this is a fairly straightforward um, single variable calculus problem. So the question is asking us to figure out how many solutions this equation has. So I have an equation, I want to figure out how many solutions this equation has. How do we typically deal with that type of uh, problem in single variable calculus? The way we deal with that would be to take everything to the same side or just leave a constant on the other side and I will actually going to do that that might be better just to reduce the number of variables and then um, graph this function so graph y equals f of x and then figure out how many intersection points are you going to get for different values of um, uh, b so for example if your graph is increasing strictly increasing and it, um, its uh, range is uh, all real numbers and for every b you have one solution. But if you have um, a, a few bumps, if you have something like this, then of course you'll have to avoid this region. Anything between here and here should be avoided. So it would have to be either above this point or at this point. These are the only ones that give you exactly one solution. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, graph this function, natural log of 1 plus x squared minus ax. Okay, so how do we deal with graphing these functions? And this is, at this point, it is the scratch work that I'm going to be uh, writing down. And then we'll find a solution, and at the end, we'll talk about how to actually write down that solution. So the way you can graph um, functions, graphs of functions, is just the typical method that we are looking at. So you take the derivative, understand the critical points. You don't really need concavity here because you're really interested in how many solutions this has. So we're going to take the derivative, find critical points, and go from there. So this one is 2x over 1 plus x squared. That's the derivative of one plus, uh, natural log of 1 plus x squared minus a. And if we take the derivative, if we take the common denominator, we get minus ax squared plus 2x minus a. Um, so I have to find critical points. So this is a quadratic typically, although not quite, because if a is 0, the numerator is not a quadratic. So that does mean we will have to take some cases. So if a is 0, then... Uh, the only critical point is x equals 0 is a critical point and f prime of x is going to be positive so this is f prime of x so it's positive when x is positive so the graph is going to look like this when x is positive it's positive increasing when x is negative it is decreasing and the function at 0 f of 0 is 0 because it's natural log of 1 which is 0 so the graph looks like this. So in this case, b would have to be 0. So a, if a is 0, then b would have to be 0. So let's take uh, the cases where um, uh, a is not 0. So suppose a isn't 0. Now, um, if we look at the um, equation that we had, minus ax squared plus 2x minus a equals 0, I believe that that was the equation that we ended up getting. So there are two roots to this equation. Um, it's also possible that there is a repeated root or maybe there are no roots. So those situations um, are going to make a difference. So we're going to take cases on how many roots this equation has. So if you look at the discriminant, discriminant is going to be 4 minus 4a squared. If the discriminant is less than 0 or equal to 0, then the function f is uh, strictly monotone. So in that case, there, there would be a solution as long as there is, uh, there would be exactly one solution as long as there is a solution. 
So let's figure out when there is a solution. So in order to figure out when there is a solution, we have to look at the behavior of the function at infinity at, at negative infinity. So if you look at the limit as x goes to infinity of natural log of 1 plus x squared minus ax, well, this one approaches infinity. So does this one. But natural log grows uh, slower. So the dominant term would be the negative ax. Um, okay, so this the result depends on whether a is positive or negative. So this would be negative infinity if a is positive, positive infinity if a is negative. And if we take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of natural log of 1 plus x squared minus ax squared minus ax, this would be infinity if a is positive because you get positive, negative, negative, that's positive, and as I said, the dominant term is the negative ax, and negative infinity if a is negative. Okay, so in both cases, the range is um, all real numbers. So there is always a solution then for a non-zero, so there is always a solution. to f of x equals b when um, a isn't 0. Okay, so we know that there's always a solution. So now we'll have to figure out when there is the solution is unique. So let's look at the derivative again. So the derivative was um, negative ax squared plus 2x minus a over 1 plus x squared. We can factor the numerator. In this case, I'm um, going to assume that, well, okay, uh, yeah, so I'm going to um, assume that there are, there are, so there are two possibilities. Either there is um, no root, which it, it was the case that we looked at. So if d is greater, less than or equal to zero, we showed that the function is strictly increasing, strictly monotone, but since there's always a solution, the um, equation would always have a unique solution when the discriminant is uh, negative or zero. You know, if, if it is not the case that the discriminant is negative or zero, which means uh, the uh, there are two distinct critical points, we can write down f prime of x in this form, um, r less than s are the roots. So r and s would be if you write, find find the roots. So um, since the since the coefficient of um, x is even, there's like a little bit of a shortcut to finding that. Um, so it's this over minus a. Simplifying, we get this formula. <clears throat> okay. So R and S are these two. Now, let's just say R is less than S. Depending on whether A is positive or negative, it could be the plus one that is larger or the minus one that is larger. Now, if R is less than S, then um, the F prime is negative A times X minus R times X minus S. So depending on where X is, we can determine when F prime is uh, positive when f prime when f prime is negative, but we do need to know what is a. The denominator is always positive. This one is always positive, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do need to know what a is. Is a positive or a negative? And then from there, I should be able to solve the problem. Okay, so now I'm kind of confident that I can actually solve this problem. It does seem a bit ugly, uh, but short of like you know a clever solution, this is uh, something that I'm going to start writing it down. Okay, so let's see how we can actually organize this. I would always write down the final answer at the beginning. However, I don't actually, I haven't actually found the final answer. So I'm going to leave some space and I'm going to write down the solution. Then I'm going to come back and fill in the details of what the answer is. So we claim that AB must be one of the following. 
the first one is a and b are both zero we determined that at the beginning when we had the case when a and b were zero the second case when was when absolute value of a is greater than or equal to one so it was this case this one gives you absolute value of a is greater than or equal to one and in that case we saw that every b would work the second case is absolute value of a is greater than or equal to one and uh, b could be any real number the third case is well we'll have to come back to these because we haven't actually and uh, check the details for those. Okay, so I'm going to leave some space here and I will come back. Okay, so I will write down the answer at the beginning and then we'll work through that. So let's start with this. Let f of x be um, natural log of 1 plus x squared minus ax. Okay, so first let's take the cases when a is 0 and when a is non zero. Uh, so f prime becomes uh, so this is 2x over 1 plus x squared minus a and this is minus a x squared plus 2x minus a over 1 plus x squared okay so if a equals 0 then um, f prime of x equals 2x over 1 plus x squared uh, thus f prime is decreasing uh, I would say strictly decreasing over the interval negative infinity to 0 and strictly increasing over the interval from 0 to infinity and then since the function approaches infinity limit of natural log of 1 plus x squared is infinity as x approaches infinity and also negative infinity f of x equals b has two solutions if b is more than f of 0 precisely one solution when b is equal to f of 0 which is natural log of 1 plus 0 squared which is 0 and no solution if b is less than f of 0 okay so this settles the case when a is 0 okay um, now assume that uh, a is not 0 okay we figured that we have to take cases the case when absolute value of a is greater than or equal to 1 and absolute value of a is less than or equal to 1 and in that case we also need to take cases when a is positive or negative so if absolute value of a is greater than or equal to 1 then the uh, equation negative ax squared plus 2x minus a equals 0 has discriminant b squared minus 4ac which is less than or equal to 0 thus f is strictly monotone okay so we know that it's strictly monotone now we also need to know how many solutions it has does it have what's the range of this function and we actually saw that up there what the range is so let's actually add that to here uh, let's take the limit of f of x as x approaches infinity this is the limit as x approaches infinity 
natural log of 1 plus x squared minus ax which is equal to so as we said this is infinity if a is negative and negative infinity if a is positive or is it the other way around yeah when a is positive it is um, uh, no that's fine if when a is negative it is infinity because that's negative that's negative that's infinity so that's um, infinity and when a is positive it would be negative infinity so the limit is uh, infinity and negative infinity and the limit of f of x when x approaches negative infinity is limit of natural log of 1 plus x squared minus ax as x approaches negative infinity which is if a is negative you get negative negative and negative so that's negative infinity and that's infinity so then by intermediate value theorem you know that the range would be all real numbers so by the IVT f of x equals b has at least one solution for every b in r now we'll have to figure out when the solution is unique so in the case when absolute value of a is greater than or equal to one the equation has discriminant this which means f is strictly monotone thus f of x equals b has a unique solution and this takes care of that case okay so now assume that a is positive and less than one then we can write down negative a x squared plus 2x minus a as negative a times x minus r times x minus s where r is the smaller of the two roots it's 1 minus root 1 minus a squared over a and s is the larger of the two 1 plus root 1 minus a squared over a okay um, and if you if you um, now consider the possibilities of f prime see what happens for, for f prime if um, x is less than r then f prime of x so less than r x minus r is negative x minus s is negative 2 this is negative this is negative there's also a negative sign here so the function is decreasing If x is between the two, between r and s, then f prime would be positive because x minus r is positive, x minus s is negative, and then minus a is negative, so that's positive. So that means f is increasing. Um, and if x is greater than s, then f prime of x is going to be negative because x minus s and x minus r are both positive and there's a negative sign in front so that becomes negative so that means f is decreasing and these are also strict so I'm gonna put uh, strictly for all of them so in other words the graph is gonna look like this So the graph would look like something like this. Um, so before r it is uh, it is decreasing, so it's something like this, and then after r it is increasing, so something like that, and then it's decreasing after s. So this one is r, this one is s. So thus f of x equals b has a 
unique solution if and only if b is either above this line or below this line b is uh, less than f of r or b is greater than f of s and r and s were given here r was the uh, 1 minus root 1 minus a squared over a s was 1 plus root 1 minus a squared um, over a okay so now um, we will have to take a look at the other case when uh, when a is negative so now suppose um, a is negative so the solution would be similar so it's also greater than um, negative 1 so a is between 0 and negative 1 in that case <coughs> negative a x squared plus 2x minus a is going to be negative a x minus r x minus s so very similar to what we had here but um, r which is the smaller one is going to be 1 plus root 1 minus a squared because a is negative so that's the smaller one And then similar to above, if x is less than r, then f is, so if you look at x less than r, x minus r is negative, x minus s is negative, there's a negative sign, a is also negative, so that's positive. So it's strictly increasing. If x is um, between r and s, then f is this is strictly decreasing and if x is more than s then f is strictly increasing so the graph would look like this so before r it is strictly increasing then it's, it's strictly decreasing then it's strictly increasing so this part if this is the x-axis this would be r this would be s so thus f of x equals b has a solution if and only if either b is less than this value or b is more than this value b is less than f of s or b is more than f of r okay um, and maybe perhaps for this one um, uh, yeah these are separate cases so maybe I will call that uh, I will call this one I'm gonna switch the s and r because yeah this time i'm gonna swap the s and r here s um r r so s and r are going to be swapped and if you do that then you will see that so s and r are going to be swapped so if it is more than f of s and less than f of r if you do that then you'll see this condition b greater than f of s b less than f of r and b greater than f of s and b less than f of r are the exact same conditions so i can summarize it to say either a and b are zero or absolute value of a is greater than one greater than equal to one or absolute value of a is between zero and one and either b is more than f of see which one I called s um, either f of b is more than f of s which is the same thing here or less than f of r less 
less than f of r. Where r is um, r is one minus root. Uh, this one is plus one minus a squared over a, and this one is one minus root one minus a squared over a. And here f is f of x is natural log of 1 plus x squared minus ax. And we can just ignore this one because we already defined it. Okay, so just cleaning it up, that would be our solution. So it is a little bit uh, time consuming and casework, it has some casework, but you can uh, make it more efficient if you kind of like, um, don't worry about, you know, what if I can't do this case? So like try every case separately and then put these all together at the end. Okay, great. So I will continue with these Putnam videos and I will see you in the next video.